by Blake. How much has Rousseau improved against the run in terms of uh, setting the edge, and is it substantially better than where it was in August? Oh, without question. He, he's come a long way since since uh, fall camp. Um, you know, he, he's such a long lever guy. He's really, really powerful. Uh, you know, when he gets his hands inside and, and uses his length, he's he's a force to be reckoned with, um, you know, run or pass. But he has come a long way since fall camp. And, and I said, I feel like a broken record because he we get asked about him every single week, but he's gotten better and better and better. And, and like I said, you're going to continue to see him play more and more and more. The defense looked much improved on Friday. What was the difference in that performance? Uh, I think accountability, you know, I think um, – you know, there's a great deal of uh, pride in that room. Um, there, there's a standard that's been set long before I was here, long before Coach Diaz was here, and that's something that we reminded them of. And, um, you know, I think they took it upon themselves. Uh, really impressed with, with some of the, the leadership that came forward last week and, and just the amount of, of focus and attention to detail. It was very evident, uh, in my opinion, the, the day before the game. Uh, we do, you know, a players, coach and players deal. And, it was one of the best I've ever seen in my career. Uh, very focused, very serious, very detailed throughout that that process. So, uh, had a good feeling, you know, going into a Friday night. Hey, Blake. I want to ask you about John Ford. Uh, it's crazy to look at the stats. I think you were first four or five games. You had a few tackles, and then this game, more active, gets a forced fumble. I'm curious to what you thought of his play after the midway point of the season. You know, he's he's had a lot of opportunities to. Um, to make a lot of tackles for loss this year, and a lot of it's been pad level at the point of attack, and I know that was a huge point of emphasis in practice last week, and especially a taller guy like himself. And, uh, you know, I think it was um, it was one of those things, you, you know, you get what you demand, and I think we demanded low pad level, uh, finishing on the ball carry, and especially we kept talking about number three, you know, the quarterback, you better tackle him well, and we didn't always do that. And, and like I said last week, he's a magician. He, he's a really, really good football player, but. I think John has played really well and just missed some opportunities that he capitalized on Friday night. Can you talk about the defense improving uh, this past week? I was wondering if you could specifically say maybe which players you feel like made the biggest jump from Virginia Tech to Virginia. Um, you know, it, it, and I'll go back to last week in practice, I think something that we've always said around here, if we want to be a great defense, your best players need to be your best practice players. And, and Mike uh, Pitney and, and Trajan Bandy by far had their, their best weeks of practice. And I think they both put together pretty big games last week. Um, you know, those two come to mind. But I think overall, when you talk about, um, like I said, attention to detail and accountability to each other, there's more than those, just those two. Those are the two that come to my mind. but. I, I thought overall a lot of guys stepped up and played you know, much better. You guys obviously been working with the CEO secondary, you look at it with Steve and more early on, there's some coverage breakdown of Hatch Manning, the question earlier, um, about 49 yard pass play. Besides that one, there was also a couple plays where it looked like DJ was right there in coverage and they were high pointing the ball. <laughs> Just want to get your thoughts on the coverage. It made it still could be better, a lot better. Absolutely. I think, uh, you know, on the big, big play, what, what, what it's coming down to is now I think we know what to do. And I think we got to continue to prove on how we do it. You know, the big pass play was a simple technique error um, and, and not on DJ Ivy. You know, he, he should have been protected underneath on that route. Um, DJ Ivy on the two balls that were caught on a back shoulder fade, you got to tip your hat. Heck of a throw and catch, man. And, and you know, DJ's getting frustrated. I said, man. You know, there's nothing you can do about that. Keep playing, keep playing. I thought he was in great position. He played the, both those balls, just like we coach it to him. And, and uh, they made two really, really good plays on that. But yeah, we got to continue to refine our, our technique. We're still, in my opinion, a far away. We're far away from being the defense we want to be. And uh, you know, it, now I think it's more of the technique. You know, we used to struggle on sometimes what to do. I think we know what to do now. Now we got to continue and get better how we do it. Absolutely. I think, you know, like I said last week, it was a long, long time that Bubba played his last game until uh, two weeks ago. And, uh, 
you know, he's, he's getting more and more comfortable within the scheme and then just getting more comfortable out there playing on, on you know, Saturdays usually, but Friday night last week. So uh, I think he's going to continue to get better. He's a guy that works hard in practice. He's, he's a smart kid. He's super athletic. Um, but, yeah, I, I think he, he got a lot better from one week to the next. Like, can you touch on the, the depth on the DR and how much of a weapon uh, that is right now, especially at this point with Nesta working his way back and now with Russo starting, Scott Patchen's not in that second group. And there were points in that game where it was entirely the second group that was playing, holding their own up front. Absolutely. I, I think by far that was our best game up front. You know, they, they were challenged last week. Uh, and I think they, they, they rose up to the occasion. And it's something that we've talked about you know, really since preseason camp, but I think they kind of put it together. And, and you know, I, I, I couldn't be more proud of Jay. And it's, it's what I've talked about. When he comes back, he adds a, a, a another dimension, a spark, a nastiness, you know, to to our D-line. And I think those those guys feed off of that. And then the Greg Russo getting better. I mean, John Ford making those plays that maybe he didn't make, you know, that we just talked about. Uh, you know, if we can roll eight, nine, ten defensive line, that, you know, they stay fresh, they're going to play a lot better. Georgia Tech was always that like a special game for the UM defense, and UM defense always did pretty well against that option. Now it's it's all different. Um, so, and Georgia Tech obviously isn't doing that well. What what do you prepare for now? What is there anything tough that you're going up against? I, I think they still have uh, you know they're obviously transitioning from a triple option, but they still still do triple option out of the spread, and uh, I think they have a lot of team speed when you look at their their skill positions and their quarterback. You know, those guys were obviously recruited to play triple options, so those guys can run. Um, we got to do a good job making sure we, we uh, you know, know where they're at and uh, do a good job tackling when we get around them. Two more questions for Coach Baker. Um, you mentioned accountability a lot, and how do you sort of define that, and what does that look like when you're watching? I think, I, you know, to me, accountability starts with yourself. I think. If you want to be a leader on this defense or you want to be able to uh, tell someone else, you know, how to get better, you have to be accountable to yourself. You have to do your job. You have to make the plays when they're presented. If you're not doing that, it's hard to tell someone else what to do. So I think it starts with yourself. And then once you, once you, um, you know, build confidence in yourself and your teammates uh, start trusting you and have confidence in you, now you can use your voice and, and you know, be a player, uh, run, run defense. So I think we're getting closer to that. Um, but that's really where I see accountability starting with yourself and then on to your teammates once you've, you've proven that you can be accountable to yourself. Blake, I know obviously you, you heard about the five warnings right here. I'm, I'm curious, I mean, you guys are not the midpoint. I'm wondering how many of the freshmen or young guys that you look at and say, okay, we're trying to see if you can rush into the box at the end of the year. I'm trying to think. Three young defensive tackles, three freshmen. Yeah, obviously we'd like to try to redshirt them, you know. Um, and no, we, we, we need Sam to play. Uh, you know, he, he, is, he is getting better and better and better. And, and you know, I think you're going to start seeing more and more of Sam as the season progresses. It's one of those things where, um, you know, going even back to high school, he wasn't a stand-up linebacker. He was a defensive end. So um, I think he's starting to adjust to the learning curve. I got to do a good job of getting him in there, and I think that'll benefit Shaq as well. But we, we need Sam, and Sam's been getting better and better every single week. Although we're not seeing it on on Saturdays per se, we're seeing it um, you know throughout throughout the week. And um, I think I think Sam Brooks is going to have a really really bright future here. But we're we're going to play Sam this year. All right, thanks a lot, everybody. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks.